I'm answering a really serious topic today about a uncommon but serious complication of dermal fillers. Uh, this is asked from Rebecca Bald, uh, one of our followers on Facebook, and she asks about blindness as a result of dermal filler injections, that is, dermal fillers causing blindness. And she asks, how can this be prevented and what do we do? So yes, it is true. It is a very rare and serious complication, but it is possible to go blind from having dermal fillers done. This is something that's always in the back of my mind as a practitioner and something I'm always thinking about every time I do a dermal filler about the possibility of this and how I can avoid it. And um, also, you know, explaining this risk to patient is something which is, I guess, not always done, but um, probably should be, even though it's quite rare. Basically what happens, just to give a quick summary, is that fillers can be injected into the arteries which supply the eye, the retina, and basically the filler gets pushed back along this artery to the back of the eye, um, to the artery at the back of the eye, which supplies the back of the eye, uh, the retina, um, and as a result you get death of those cells and loss of vision, usually in one eye. Now this is all pretty scary. Um, it is extraordinarily rare, however, and different studies report different numbers. I've heard um, around 40 to 50 in one study, approximately half of those being uh, as a result of dermal filler and half of those as a result of um, fat transfer to the face, so injecting fat, your own fat into the face. Um, other uh, reports have said up to 100 people in the world, but my general feeling is that this is possibly underreported and maybe if people have a partial deficit it's not reported or maybe these things um, in other countries have gone uh, unreported, maybe in countries where there's not such tight regulations. Basically the prevalence is low if you really, if you compare it to the number of dermal filler treatments that go on uh, in, in, in the world. So you're looking at millions and millions and millions of treatments and uh, the risk of blindness um, as a result of dermal filler is in, in comparison to the number which have actually been done is extraordinarily low. Uh, but nonetheless, it's such a serious complication. You know, you walk in for some fillers, to, hoping to look better, hoping to feel better and uh, to have a complication like this is, is life changing. Uh, for the for the patient and, and for the and for the practitioner as well, uh, I've been very fortunate um, in my uh, career of uh, 12 years of injecting. I haven't um, ever had a case of um, of uh, blindness, and I uh, hope to never have one. Um, but it's something you know that that is uh, it'd be disastrous, absolutely disastrous for everyone involved, um, and. And that's why I thought I'd talk about this today with you, uh, to, to explain that to you that there is a risk of it, but it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have fillers done. It just means that um, you need to uh, understand that um, who you're going to and the techniques they're using. So you need to make sure that who you're going to understands the things that need to be done to prevent this sort of complication from happening. Um, so that's the first thing. And also, I guess, if, if it is uh, a risk for you um, that you can't uh, tolerate, then I guess that, that hopefully this video will, will, will stop you from undergoing a procedure which, um, which you, you would have undergone had you not known the risks. And look, I, I've actually had a, just to give, put this in context, I've had a patient who, who was actually blind in one eye and wanted some nose filler. Uh, and I said to him, look, I'm not doing it for you because uh, basically if on the off chance that you do go blind in the good eye that you have, you will be completely blind. So I actually refused to do his treatment for him. So you, you have to put, you know, you have to have, I think, an understanding of um, the context of this within each patient as well. Let's go into exactly the, uh, the mechanism of how this happens. So if you look at um, the face uh, anatomically, it's full of arteries and veins. In fact, we can't even imagine how many there are. There are thousands literally running all, all you know, different um, parts of the face, uh, supplying you know, everything from the skin down to the, you know, the bone. Um, it, it, these arteries traverse through different depths 
and uh, and of course um, they're all sort of interconnected in a way. Um, so there's a lot of anastomosis, which means basically uh, interconnections between one artery and another, and um, and 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 what happens in the, in the, in incidents where you um, get blindness from dermal fillers is that your filler is actually being injected into an artery and it passes usually backwards against the flow of the artery against the flow of the blood and backwards into the arteries which cause uh, which 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 supply the back of the eye which then causes death of those retinal cells so you, you basically kill off uh, the back of your cell because it, it, it doesn't have a blood supply due to blockage of that blood supply with the filler. So quite scary stuff, very very scary stuff and um, because we don't see the anatomy of the face from the inside, we only get to see the skin, you know, the surface anatomy, we're basically um, injecting without any visual guidance so we can't see, we don't, we can't use ultrasound and and uh, or, or some sort of imaging technology to visualize the arteries. It's, it, it's too complex, so uh, it's impossible to do that. So basically, we, we inject uh, without any um, knowledge of exactly where the arteries are. But we do have an idea, but we, don't, we can't precisely pinpoint the artery in a, in a certain person. And remember, everyone is different. So arteries so may run, uh, for example, along the nasal labial fold, um, and one person it may run outside the nasal labial fold, one person it might run inside the nasal labial fold. So you don't know where that main artery is going. Um, it could be either direction um, or either side of the nasal labial fold. So, you know, we can't be 100% um, specific as to the anatomy for each person. But there are sort of um, uh, areas which are more risky than others. and. Uh, and for example, um, the central part of the face is is very highly vascular, um, and and often that's why you know in Asian countries, for example, where a lot of you get a lot of people who inject their noses um, or around that area, you know, um, they often have a high incidence of of, um, of blindness in their countries because they inject so many noses to make the nose taller and that's a very vascular area which leads onto the eye so um, you know that 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 is a risky area to inject for example as the the more lateral we go um, the less likely uh, we we have blood vessels that um, that that are associated with the eye area so the more centrally we are the more likely um, uh, the risk. So the key risky areas would be the forehead frown or glabella area, uh, the nose adjacent to the nose, the nasolabial folds. These are the key areas. You know, the facial artery runs up from the heart, up the side of the, the face, along the side of the nose, through back to the back of the eye. So you get a lot of vascular supply, arterial supply through the central part of your face. So certainly if you're looking at having any part like those areas injected, forehead, glabella or frown, nose, nasal labial folds, then your risk is much higher. Um, I, I mean the ironic thing about this is that uh, you know going back when we first started doing uh, fillers, I'm talking about you know 10, 12 years ago, and fillers were generally, you know, they were, they were in the infancy back then, or, or certainly not, or not nowhere near as advanced they were uh, now. The techniques, anyway, and pretty much patients used to come in and always say, "Inject my nasal labial folds," and they still do say that nowadays. But we don't inject them as much because generally we d we direct them to other areas because you know filling the nasal labial folds is is not a is not aesthetically. Um, an amazing place to fill. But uh, back then we used to say, you know, we used to be good doctors and listen to our patients and say, okay, we'll fill your nasal labial folds for you. Little did we know back then that um, that the nasal labial folds were actually one of the key areas for vascular um, complications, um, including, um, including blindness. Um, but, uh, you know, because it's such a vascular area. But we injected thousands and we were very lucky to get away with uh, no complications in this area in, our, in the history of doing this. Look at actually what's happened in the past 10 years. The knowledge and the, um, 
and the awareness of of uh, these sort of complications have increased and increased. So uh, it's interesting, you know, when we used to go back to uh, just thinking of conferences, you know, cosmetic conferences that I used to attend many years ago, there was never any talk about this. And now in more recent years, uh, conferences often have a whole uh, half day or, or whole um, section associated with vascular complications, not just with blindness, but with complications of injecting filler into an artery. Um, and, and yes, there are just a, as a, a, a side point here. There is there are other possible vascular complications that you can get from injecting filler into an artery. For example, you can block off an area of skin, uh, the blood supply to an area of skin. So that would cause death of the skin, which at worst could cause uh, you to need some sort of surgery to put some new skin there, so put a, a skin graft there, for example. That would be uh, also a very serious complication. Um, and I, I think the incidence of that is actually a lot higher um, than the incidence of blindness as a result of dermal filler. Now we'll go on to the next part, of, which is um, how do you treat um, blindness as a result of dermal filler? Uh, I'm talking more about the immediate management. Now this might not be something necessarily as relevant to you as a patient, uh, but but it's it's interesting to know what the what the um, treatment is. Uh, and as practitioners, we have very little experience. In this. I have no experience in treating uh, blindness as a result of dermal filler because I've never had a case. But as a whole, because there's been so few cases, we really don't have a lot of experience with treating it. And the uh, success of treating it, I believe, has has been very low. So I'm I, I'm uh, I'm not aware of many cases which actually have been treated successfully once the patient goes blind. But I have um, um, spoken to a few of my colleagues who are ophthalmologists, and um, one uh, of the ophthalmologists I spoke to said that the first thing you should probably try to do is massage the eyeball to try and push that filler out of the circulation there. So that that could be a possible. Um, initial first step um, what you know and then but really the key thing is to try and get rid of that filler in the in the artery at the back of the eye so uh, so what you'd really want to do is use Hylase or Hyaluronidase which is a filler dissolver so we commonly use this uh, filler dissolver for dissolving say things like lumps or bumps or excess filler but um, this would be probably the number one thing you could do to help avoid um, or help reverse blindness that has occurred. Um, and you actually need to get the dissolver to the back of the eye. So this is where it gets a bit scary. So for the doctor involved, now interestingly, uh, you know, I think very few doctors are actually trained in this technique. I mean, um, I, I did some anesthetics back um, before I did cosmetics, and and this is this technique is actually used to get local anaesthetic at the back of the eye before you have a cataract surgery. So, so it's the same technique, but instead of injecting local anaesthetic, you can inject dissolving agent. So, you can actually get an, you'd have to get in the needle and inject it right behind the eyeball. So you have to go just just in the orbit there and go right behind the eyeball and inject the dissolver right behind there. So. Hope, with the hope that the dissolve would, would pass through to the arteries um, that are blocked by the filler and then resolve the uh, impending death of, of, uh, of the uh, retinal cells there. So um, that would be the treatment, uh, the ultimate treatment for uh, someone who goes blind. And that, that, that's, um, it sounds absolutely crazy. You could imagine the scenario of someone having fillers done and then going blind. Um, and then the doctor having to inject uh, a needle right to the back of the eye. It's a bit like Pulp Fiction, that scene where, you know, the, 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 they have to give the adrenaline straight to the heart. I mean, it'd be, it would be absolutely terrifying, I think, um, for, bo you know, for both parties. The treatment really is not something a lot of any of us will get to or have to be involved with, but uh, probably more important for us is to know about is the um, is the prevention. So how do we prevent uh, as a doctor? How do I prevent um, causing blindness with dermal fillers? And you, you've got to think about it. 
as, as painful as it is to, to think about um, you know, the consequences, you have to sort of think about it in advance. It has to be in the back of your mind at all times when injecting dermal fillers. Now, um, I do explain, when I do inject risky areas, I do explain the risk to my patients uh, of blindness. Um, but, you know, it, it's sometimes a, um, a, a, a touchy area to, to touch upon. And, you know, you do have to put it in perspective for your patients. But um, I guess first thing would be to make sure your patients understand the risk. And, you know, that gives them an opportunity to back out of that treatment or to, you know, to you know, to, to try something else, uh, to try other treatments or whatever. But um, so that's the first part. Now, second part of the prevention is the technique, really. So the technique that I use or your doctor uses for um, injecting the dermal fillers. Now, because the face is filled with arteries, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're actually injecting into arteries a small amount of filler now and then. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case, but I think the, the amount we inject could possibly be too small to make any problems, or, or maybe um, you know it just gets in there and, and nothing happens. Um, so I think the first thing is, is to inject slowly. So you don't want to be too quick on your injections. That For me, that means putting less pressure on the plunger on the back of the plunger when I'm injecting. So when I'm injecting, I inject slowly, don't put too much pressure on the back of the plunger, and watch the patient, watch for any signs of pain, which can be associated with um, injecting near artery or vein. So sometimes when you inject near artery or vein, or, or, um, they get a bit of a twinge, so if they have pain, you will stop. Um, and injecting really slowly, and watching the patient, watching the skin, watching what happens as I inject. And I think that's really important. The next thing is to use cannulas in appropriate areas. So um, where, especially in high risk areas, for example, the glabella or the frown area, I, uh, if I have to inject that area, then I use um, a cannula, which is basically a rounded tip uh, needle, which is, so it's not sharp at the end, it's rounded. So if it hits against an artery, it will hopefully push past it as opposed to a needle which if you hit an artery you may insert the needle into the artery so that would give you an intravascular injection so using a cannula will potentially avoid the artery using a cannula can certainly help with um, with avoidance of arteries um, by by slipping around them but it doesn't mean that you you will not inject into it. It doesn't, it doesn't give you certainty of not injecting into the artery. So injecting into the direction of the artery is probably the wrong thing to do. So if you know an artery is running this way, don't inject in that direction. You know, so inject perpendicular to it, not parallel to the artery, because you know it's going to go, you know, we know the general direction of arteries. So we can inject perpendicular to them rather than parallel. So if the frown, we know the frown is a big artery going up this way, we inject this way to avoid cannulating, basically, or injecting into, like, like you know, when you have a cannula in your in your in your hand or back for, before you have an anaesthetic or an operation, you want to avoid slipping the the cannula or needle into the artery. So go perpendicular to it. Now, I think the most important thing is though is to for your practitioner understand the anatomy and the ver various risks associated with each area. So. If your doctor or nurse or injector understands the anatomy of what they're doing, then it's probably going to be less likely that you'll have a problem um, because they know where the important structures run as a rule, as a general rule, and they try to avoid those areas. Okay, so I hope that uh, was not too frightening a talk for you. It was meant to be educational and not to scare you. But I hope that I've informed you better about the possible risks and uh, as a result, maybe you um, can choose more wisely whether you want to have fillers done or not, or you can pick an appropriate practitioner with appropriate experience or even ask them the right questions. If you have an existing practitioner already, ask them the questions about what they know. And maybe I've helped you in some way. Um, so thank you for your time. It's been a a fairly long video but thank you for your time and listening to me I hope this helps you in some way 
uh, in the future.